Here we go with DM tips for Chapter 2 of Wild Beyond the Witchlight. This is going to cover Hither and Downfall and Babylonia's Cottage, the first of the coven. If you are a player, there will be spoilers abounding here, so please come back after you've played the adventure. The adventure has the characters beginning at level 2 when they enter Hither, and it has them level to level 3 when they encounter Babylonia. I would move that up so that they raise the level 3 before they enter Downfall. Reason being is Downfall's got some difficult encounters in it itself, and level 3 would be make that better. And Babylonia herself is extremely difficult, even at level 3. And so I would also recommend for Babylonia, throw in some dials there that you can turn, and one of those is how many Lornlings she has with her. Those Lornlings do a lot of damage and are very hard to kill. She starts with two in the adventure. I'd have her start with one and have her add only one as she summons them. If that's too easy, you can increase the number she summons or increase the recharge rate of her summoning. If it's still too hard, um, she's a chicken, so she'll probably run for thither at the first sign of getting you know any damage to the party. So you can invoke that if things are getting just too hard, even with the mana lornlings reduced. We'll get back to her in a minute. Let's go on to the rest of hither. So the first thing that they cover in chapter two is actually an overview of all of Prismere, which hither is one uh, splinter realm of Prismere. And so I will put in the chat below a link to some macros that I did that summons, um, summarizes the things in the guide for Prismere. We got mists, guides, rules, children, emotions, death, and foraging. So I will put that all um, in those macros that you can grab and do it for yourself. Um, before I'd have the party begin, I'd make sure I knew whose missing items are in uh, Hither, in the Frog and B-19 in Babylonia's Cottage. I'd make sure I knew who participated in the giant snail race because that's going to come in at the very start of the adventure. And then I would look for special knowledge to share with the players of the characters beforehand so that they can share it with the rest of the party um, in character during the adventure. That'd be things like Agdalan Scarf's background, uh, how foraging can find treats in Prismere, um, some of the various creatures of Prismere, like the Campestries and Basilis and the Haragons and things of that nature. I'll put all those in the description below as well. Now, for music for this adventure, I would recommend using Swamplandia by Tabletop Audio. And let me just play a little bit of that so you can hear what that sounds like. It's really good, just generic swamp sounds and crickets and frogs, etc. All right. Let's see, one last thing before we get into the meat of the different parts of the map and encounters. Resources. I'll put links to resources down below. There's maps that you can grab online by uh, Tessa, Heroic Maps, others. Eventier Games has like a guide. That's very good. And I'll put all those in the link in the uh, description of the video down below. All right, let's go through the encounters, or maybe we'll start with pacing. So the adventure could run in either two four-hour sessions, I think, or three four-hour sessions. When I ran it, it took me three four-hour sessions to run. And this is kind of how I controlled the pacing here uh, using random encounters. So hour zero through one, I did the arrival, the balloon crash, and reaching bottom. And if I hadn't gone one hour yet, I threw in the first of the random encounters. Again, holding the end at the the end at the end of the road to the last, because I want that to be like where the party does their extended rest and gains their level. Okay, then hour one to two, I did Slanty Tower. And be careful at Slanty Tower. Those snakes are deadly at level two. So I would have them roll in on the party one at a time, to see how it's how it goes. Um, when I ran at the party I ran had had um, gotten Talavar and we're using his breath on the snakes by carrying him around, and that helped them. So that's something you can have uh, Talavar maybe suggest to the party. Now, the next part, hour two to three, the party goes to Delemi Hill. Now, they can just run into it, but I would throw in that Talavar overheard Babylorna talking about how no key could open this cage except maybe a key that Jingle Jangle had, who lives at Telemi Hill. And Sir Talavar was going there because Wigglewog, the dead, uh, the dead Bullywog, who's with him, heard um, about where Telemiel was. Okay, then hour three to four, 
I'd do Brigham's Tollway, and then the end of the end of the road, and that would be the end of the first day. The second day and the third day of playing, or sessions of playing, are a little more difficult to judge, engage, and control this pacing of, because they're really um, encounter location-based. So how long they take will depend largely on how much the party explores, how thoroughly they explore. Let them do that. There'll be overlap between the cottage and downfall. It might take less time. It might take more time. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff there. So I definitely would say let them do that. Now, if you're trying to run it quickly, and you're trying to get through all of it in, say, two sessions, I would do it this way. Um, I would do our zero through one arrival, balloon crash, reaching bottom, and slanty tower. And probably going to have to strip out any random encounters to make that happen. And then our one to two, Telemi Hill, Brigham's Tollway, in at the end of the road. And again, probably no time for random encounters. Then, hour two through four, they get to downfall. And you'll have to run that pretty quick for them to explore very much of it. And eventually, make sure they've seen Babylonia's Cottage because you want the next session to be mostly Babylonia's Cottage. They could, you know, come out, explore more about downfall. But that's how I would do it if I was trying to do it in two sessions. Okay, let's look at uh, the adventure maps that I sent out. So this map here is from Heroic Maps, just a good generic Swampland map. Then these two maps here are from Tessa, Tessa's maps, and her maps, um, she has a lot of them. They're a little bit smaller, though. And then this one here came from Aventir Games, I believe. And then there's another one um, in the links below. It's just called Wild Beyond the Witchlight Map Pack. And that one's got bigger maps, kind of like the one from Aventir Games here. Uh, but fewer of them than Tessa has. So lots of things to choose from there. Check them out, check the previews out, and drive through RPG, see which ones you like the best. Uh, but lots of stuff to pick from for, for using maps in the adventure. Okay, so the party should, again, start out at the causeway. They should see the balloon crash. They could climb down. They have the herring gun encounter. They get to Slanty Tower. They meet Sir Talavar. He tells them more background information. Eventually they get to Telemi Hill. Eventually they'll get to the Brigham's Tollway, and then I'd take the end of the last, um, at the end of the road, and put it right after that. And then they go into Downfall. And let's change maps. I actually put this on a different map, Downfall. It's really big. And the artwork is a lot of fun. So here's the map of Downfall. Here's a top-down map of Downfall. The, uh, the party comes in, they run into some bullywogs here who tell them that they should go see the king. So then they can meet the bullywogs here at the balloon, who are fixing the balloon. I put on the map, and I do this a lot, um, things for the players to see, just text that describes things. So there's thick fog everywhere, visible is only 20 feet. Then, also on the uh, keeper layer, I'll put the descriptions of the different locations so the players don't see actually these numbered locations. They got the stepping stones, the encounter with the gallop dur, the marrow. Then they come to the ruined balloon factory with the encounter with all the uh, coals, the burning coals. And then they can meet Clapperclaw and all the old um, bullywog kings with their heads on spits. Clapperclaw tells me he's looking for his missing head. Uh, that'll come into play later. Then they come to meet King Gullop the 19th. He wants them to take the big book of bad blood back to Babylonia. So if you're running this and trying to do it short, you could really emphasize that, really try and push them to get the book to Babylonia to wrap up the first session and get them into Babylonia's cottage. Now, um, there's a, like a subplot of a secret note. You might want to leave that out if you're trying to do this in four hours. If you're doing it in the full, you know, 12-hour run, definitely have the secret note. Um, one of the fun things about the Bullywogs is there's all sorts of court intrigue and drama and such, and one of these Bullywogs hands the party a note about a revolution that's coming up. So don't forget that. I like to put, you know, notes to remind me that are real important, also in the GM layer. Okay, then they can come over, and if they're going to take the big book of bad blood up to Babylonia, they have to go to the palace to get outfitted with uh, proper attire. So there's the palace here. There is the prisoner Morgort, who they could run into. Morgort was one of the accomplices that got Sir Talavar out, but stayed behind when Sir Talavar and Wigglewog left. And Morgort can um, promise to help them get away, a quick getaway if they need to. 
There's the Darkling uh, shop here. We come down to the lower area, and we have probably, probably start over this direction, but never know. You got the Watchtower. You've got the Conspirators all in this um, hut here. And I put a note saying drawing, so I'd remember that they have the drawing of uh, how they're going to kill the king and take over. We got the giant toad encounter. We've got uh, the elf in the toadstool encounter. And then we got the tree. This tree is really dangerous. Be careful there. Um, I'm not sure what good dials to use there, but I think you want to have the tree kind of wake up slowly because it can be very dangerous for a low-level party to fight that tree. Oh, you also have the um, Bavlorna's Cauldron, which is a cool encounter, but my party didn't have any way to understand what the uh, Magman was saying to them, so that kind of fell flat. Uh, all right, so that is Downfall. Lots and lots to explore. Again, that took like a full four hours for the party to explore. And then you have Bavlorna's Cottage on stilts in the midst of all the fog. So the party can't see it until pretty much they go looking for it or you want to reveal it. You can use that, you know, have the mist part to see the cottage. That's kind of a lure to get them going in there if you're trying to do this in a little bit shorter session. Bavlorna's Cottage. So I have the map right over here. And... We have the room with the uh, dark mantle on top of the, the the dolls there. We got the, or the mannequins. We got the jelt in this cube in the pool. Now the party, when I ran it, they fought Bavlorna. And then fighting Bavlorna, they didn't have to go do the chores, so they never ran into the cube. Um, nothing else special to that level, really. Now they go up the stairs, they come to the hall, and in this hall, of course, they have all the different pictures and the mirror where they can find and spy on Babylonia, who's going to be here in the study talking to Charm. Charm being the uh, Darkling uh, and Babylonia. Here, I just ran this, so Babylonia was badly wounded when she got away. <clears throat> the rest of this level, you have some Lornlings spying. You have this... Um, Red cap in the kitchen, make sure to grab the keys because the first time my party fought Bavlorna, they were beaten, thrown into the cages here, and you know, use those keys by having an animal friend go in there and get them and get them out. We have the heart of the elf that's in downfall, and that's that level. So when I ran this the first time, the party came in and just confronted Bavlorna in this room with charm. Charm exited, found a way out to not have to fight the party, and Bavlorna wiped the floor with the party, knocked them all unconscious, threw them in the cells to eat later, told the red cap that she was going to prepare them. The party befriended an animal, a snake, uh, had it go get the keys, got him out of there, and then deceived the red cap about why they weren't prisoners anymore. And the red cap, naturally not liking Bavlorna, didn't question it too much and went along with it. Then the second time the party uh, was exploring, Bavlorna was down in her pool and the party had a chance to get up to her bedroom and explore that. And there, Bavlorna cornered them. Another big fight. Luckily, they got the better of Bavlorna and sent her scurrying on to thither. And that was the end. So, I'd recommend, again, like I say, raise the party to level three before they get to downfall and turn the dial down on Babylonia, turn the dial down on the big tree and ramp it up if it looks like they're handling it okay. That's it. That's the tips for this adventure. I hope you guys have a great time. Like the video if it was helpful and come back and leave comments about how it went for you. Thank you and I will see you for the next one.